Everybody wanted to impress Jeff, don't you? I think so. <laughs> Good afternoon and welcome to the July meeting of the Murfreesboro Historic Zoning Commission. Uh, we do have a quorum, so I call this meeting to order. And you have received in your packet minutes from the June meeting, and I hope you've had a chance to review them. Are there any necessary edits or additions? I make a motion we approve as submitted. A we, have a sec we have a second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, the meeting minutes are approved. Joe, please go over our first and only, it appears to be our only um, bit of business today. Sure. The, um, the property in question is at 2255 Middle Tennessee Boulevard. Uh, the property owner wants to add a decorative black metal fence to enclose the front yard and a portion of the driveway. Uh, the fence is proposed to be five feet tall and will encompass the entire front yard up to the sidewalk. Um, I did mention to the applicant that it has to be at least 20 feet back from the roadway, so uh, he will be measuring that at some point, but it may not be exactly up to the sidewalk. Um, the house is uh, from the two-door revival architecture, which is made of brick, stone, and stucco with a gabled roof. And the house is a contributing structure in the East Main Historic District of the National Register of Historic Places. In your handout, I have included some pictures of the uh, house and the surrounding properties. The uh, picture on the screen in front of you is the front of the existing home. And here are the two houses on either side. The top picture shows the property directly to the north, and the um, bottom picture is the property directly to the south. Here is a uh, hand-drawn uh, layout of how the fence will look on the property. It's kind of hard to see, but if you can follow my cursor on the screen, <clears throat> it's this black line here that he drew on the plan. And so that is where the fence will encompass the front yard. Uh, there will be a gate on the sidewalk that leads from the public sidewalk to his front door. And there will be another gate over here on the driveway to um, enclose in the vehicles in the back. The uh, property owner is in the audience, Mr. Jeff Davis, and uh, he's here to answer any questions that you may have. Mr. Davis, if you'd like to step up to the podium. You could just generally describe the project. I think it's presented as a security fence. Um, if you could elaborate on. That's about it, uh, Mr. Thompson, Chairman Thompson. Um, we just have a lot of foot traffic. Uh, the, uh, when, the, when the road is completed, it'll be a grassed median uh, in front of me. I've been told that there are going to be uh, benches for the students to uh, rest and uh, just a, an extra layer of security really and I I don't think it look I don't think it will be that offensive uh, my wife Ann and I have have looked at, at others uh, if you keep I don't know if you can tell that by the picture Joe showed the one with the orange barrel in front but we've got about a Two foot rise, the yard comes up from the sidewalk. And so the house sits <coughs> a little higher. So the, the five foot fence is actually, as it, the perspective of the house, well, yeah, you can see there. I don't think we'll block much of the front of the house. You, I mean, I'm certainly open to suggestions, but it, it's mainly security. Have you noticed, I mean, is, are, are people walking through your yard more so not, since the... Not now, no, not now. No, we don't have hardly any foot traffic now because the sidewalk is closed. Before the, the road was being It was increasing, on. yeah. It, it, it was, uh, and a lot of uh, people that I don't think are students either. We're, we're pretty busy, you know, between Davis Market and uh, not Davis Mark anymore, but we we had we we were have we had a lot of foot traffic before the the construction project started, and we anticipate more when it's completed. Which uh, w we've enjoyed living by the university. We're virtually on campus now. They join us 
uh, on, on the north. But I just uh, would like an, uh, just an added layer of security and we like the style fence that you all approved for us that uh, goes in front of our courtyard. Could you describe how they're cutting through your lot? To, can we bring up the uh, site plan again where the fence is proposed? I, I find that so many of our properties are becoming all uh, surrounded by fences, you know, demarking their property lines. And so I'm just wondering how they're cutting through. I can't really say that they, it, that they make a habit of cutting through uh, Chairman Thompson. It's more sidewalk traffic. Uh, we have on occasion had a couple take a seat on the front steps. Uh, we had an interesting situation a few years ago with an Easter egg hunt <laughs> out front. But they, this, he was not a student, <laughs> but he was a, an Easter egg hunter though. <laughs> but uh, we just, uh, you know, crimes kind of spiked over there in the last couple of years around campus, in and around campus. and. Uh, we just want a little extra. I mean, y'all, you know what's been in the paper and what. Does anybody on the commission have a question? Uh, I, well, I have a couple of questions. I, I'm looking on the picture, and I think, are you directly across from the president's house? And so the, Pretty much. the house to your south, does it face Tennessee Boulevard, or does it face Main Street? No, there's two between me and Main Street. So there's there's the house next to you, and then the next one is one the one on the that corner. faces Main Street. Right, is that right? It's, it's okay. on the corner, and I, it. I'm not sure if it has a Main Street address or a Boulevard address. Okay, and and uh, do you know what the anticipated completion of the road project is? Does they uh, know? The, they kicked the project off in the spring of 2016 and they had yeah. a, a uh, community meeting yeah and it was an 865 day project okay so a little over two years right and um, I, as I was telling chairman Thompson earlier they were, were ahead and now now I think they're a little behind again but, yeah uh, um, and the media and I drove down the street the other day uh, to, uh, Middle Tennessee Boulevard and I was looking at the median and it, it appears that it's a narrower median in many places than south of Main Street or maybe it I th maybe that's my perception no, uh, because of the does. turn lanes I think it is, yeah. and so I I and I don't know if the landscaping is intended to be the same as south of Maine but in terms of benches and that sort of thing I don't know how many benches are going to be on the uh, are going to be in the median or or where they'll be, but that was in the uh, uh, when we first uh, started talking about this project. Gosh, it was five years ago. Yeah, that was one of the things that uh, came up at one of the community right. meetings about uh, yeah. benches in the median, uh -huh. and, uh, the old style lamp. Yeah, I don't think there are any benches on the south south of uh, Main Street, and I, and it doesn't look like there's room really for benches. But I, I'm just kind of curious about uh, the need for a fence if most people use the sidewalk you know it's a I live uh, on Lytle Street and I get a hu pretty good amount of pedestrian traffic on my street and my house is much closer uh, to the sidewalk it's you know it's like 30 feet maybe from the sidewalk and I I don't uh, some the perception of safety is uh, obviously, that's an important aspect of of living anywhere. And um, well, keep in mind when you go south of Maine, you leave campus. You know, we we are we're yeah. on campus. They're, they're right. building a marquee right there at the intersection, and I think it's going to be the main entrance. It'll it'll be a big sign, to, similar, I think, to the one that's on Rutherford Boulevard. Looks like. So, uh, it, you know, I could see where there wouldn't be any south of Main Street, but yeah, we're, yeah. We're the only three houses, I think. I was asking uh, Mr. Cantrell earlier how far down the university owned, uh, and I, I think they own well into the second block past Lytle, the first row of houses. And, and we're, we're in their long range acquisition zone. And yeah. of course, there's always the possibility that if they were to 
use uh, their condemnation uh, authority through eminent domain to take us, it, it might be, end up being a chain link fence <laughs> instead of a... How long have you been living there? 1985. 85. Well, the house just to your north is is the uh, universities. Sure is. Yeah, on that, yeah. We, we, sure is. We looked at that a project at, on that house some years ago, I believe. Uh, th there's a th there's a gate behind that. That was at one time was I think the uh, alumni relations house, right. but I'm not sure if they still is, do they still use it for that. Uh, they have uh, guests. They I don't know if they're living quarters there, but they have uh, people who come and stay extended periods uh, behind it. Uh, I think they may be um, adjunct professors or. Yeah, there's a lady, uh, I think, that has just spent some time there, maybe a couple of months. We, we see her when we're in the backyard, so. That is a, you know, it's, there, there's a gate between there and the church to what, uh, the gate that what used to be North Boulevard, but it stays unlocked. <clears throat> I had two questions, Mr. Davis. What will, what will the, gate on the on the driveway what will that fence connect to on your neighbor's side the uh there's the the eight foot <coughs> shadow box fence that separates me from the uh, university. university's property i will refer to that as the alumni house for lack between me and the alumni house and there'll be some kind of, it's right on the property line, so there'll be some kind of post, I think, installed there. I don't think the, we probably would close the gate at night, but probably would stay open mostly during the day. Uh, so I guess my question was, so there won't be any new black metal fence? Um, where that alumni house fences. In other words, the gates are going to, on one side, on your house side, it'll be more metal, I mean black, black metal, right. and then on the, the university side, you'll be attaching that gate to, to a I, Probably to a post that's okay. just adjacent to, or, or as close as we can put it to their wooden fence. Yeah. Their, their wooden fence has, uh, I'm going to guess, eight foot gaps, two of them as we go back up our driveway, that is for landscaping. And so we would like to enclose uh, those two with this same fence design. Is, now that, that, is that that black line around the trees then that we see on that fence? It's like a C shape. Yes, yes, that's it. That's that, that is it. Yes. Yes. Okay. And you'll fill in with wood there to match the shadow. No, I wanted to stay with the. Uh, my idea was to stay with the fluted rail. Do you know how wide the sidewalk is going to be along I don't. there? I don't. And <clears throat> uh, Joe brought a point up. I, I this this. Uh, this may not work at all anyway. I don't think I can, I don't think we're gonna be 20 feet from the, from the road. I, I don't think the sidewalk and the grassy area on the other side of the sidewalk, I don't think that's gonna be 20 feet. I, I'd say it's 16 maybe, but I think it'd be a real stretch. So there'll be a grass right. median. Between the sidewalk and the street and, 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 and the, the curb. Sidewalk I would think would be at least six feet, but I, I don't know yeah. that. And if we, you know, if we couldn't put the fence at the bottom uh, of the where the where the yard joins the driveway, then up high on that where the yard rises up, I, I just don't think that would look appropriate. I, I think one of the things that we had in our mind, and my wife Ann and I talked about, right? Yeah, that uh, since the house is above, that the the fence wouldn't be such an eye, uh, I don't want to say eyesore, because I, 
I think Jack Weatherford's fence is really, is really a nice fence, and you know it wouldn't be. Uh, Mr. Davis, how how high is uh, Mr. Weatherby's fence? Uh, I would guess it's. Uh, I'd say it's an eight or seven or eight, maybe six. It's it's higher than. It's at least seven. Yeah. yeah. In the fence that you right came in some months back yeah. and we approved there, how tall is it? It's five. So you're extending the same height and it's the same fence, so to right. speak? Right, the same fence, same uh, design. We're going to put a, uh, probably put a gate uh, right there in the courtyard in case we want to let the dogs run in the front yard every now and then. To my knowledge, the only uh, front yard with a fence is on East Main. It's a fairly high fence, probably eight feet tall. That's when we were talking about the Weatherford okay. fence. There's actually two there. Uh, the uh, Henry Gregg home has got the four foot green uh, yes. between Hancock and yeah. between Hancock but as, and. But as uh, far as tall fences, I mean, like in the, in Nashville, they have restrictions that in the front yard it can only be four, and as it mm -hmm. goes along the side, it can step up to six, and the highest is eight. Mm -hmm. uh, we had one gentleman on East Main near Tennessee Boulevard on the, on the uh, I guess it's the south side, who he wanted, he's a corner lot, and he wanted to put a fence up, I believe, but he came before us and asked for a landscaped uh, hedge mm -hmm. there, and it's still growing. I drive by and I look at it every time just to make sure it's not dying and disappearing. Mm -hmm. And have y'all considered a landscape? Oh, yeah, we well, definitely. When they get through with the sidewalk and we know what everything's going to look like, yeah, we that the way that front yard slopes, I, I, I don't know how well we could get shrubbery to. Well, I'm actually saying in lieu of a metal fence uh, um, or wood fence, what if you just did a landscape hedge that that implies a visual, you know, don't come in my yard. Oh, I hadn't really thought about that, Chairman Thompson. I, I, I'd have to give that some thought, talk to my wife about that. I, I haven't, I, I honestly can't say I've given that. For instance, part of my concern is that it sets a precedent for more fences, that if everybody started doing it, it would look like a stockaded East Main Street. Yeah, everybody I can did. see that. So that's why the more, whenever we set precedent in the, our, our review documents that we go by, we talked about fences and that they're not generally, you know, we don't like to put them in there just because that open air where kids used to run through yards mm -hmm. and these big open yards with no fences, we're starting to get very much more compartmentalized and taller fences and demarking your property and it's almost like don't come on my property. Well, it's yeah. a security issue, I understand. But, but yeah, the definition uh, in and of itself of a fence or a wall is to keep somebody in or somebody out. And we just, like I said, wanted an extra layer of Security. I thought about bringing up the aspect of vegetation down through there, but also provides a place to hide, mm -hmm. so you're not visible. Um, and if you're doing it for security purposes, then you know you may be contradicting what you really want to do. Um, Dr. McPhee's house. Uh, I guess y'all have noticed. Uh, they built a really nice brick wall <laughs> on his side, and I have in my mind a question that I'm not sure if that sidewalk is going to come back over on that side until we get to Lytle. I, I, I just don't know the answer to that. Well, that was something I noticed the other day. The brick wall and, and is right next to the sidewalk, which is right next to the road. It would be a scary sidewalk to walk on, I think. Yeah. <laughs> just because well, I just the, think that's going to put more traffic, traffic but, uh, on, on our side of the... But I think uh, and what uh, Jim mentioned, I, I, I can think of a couple of properties on Main Street that we uh, looked at this same issue. One is the apartments. Um, I can't remember what they're called. Uh, no, not Nilewood. The white, uh, white ones. The they call it the columns. 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 They call it the and, and I think they had talked about a fence, and we discussed it with them, and they ended up just doing landscaping, mm -hmm. which turned out to be fairly attractive. And I think the other house was at the corner of Second and Main Street. Uh, Thomas, is that correct? Mm -hmm. And they ended up with a, a hedge, and it's not something that someone could hide behind. It's a it's a landscape hedge and it's actually turned out to be quite attractive 
and it is living and it's done well. And uh, but looking at our guidelines, we we have been meeting so seldom that we don't have a chance to look over the and, and don't address this sort of issue very often. I think it's yeah. this is the third time in five, six, seven mm -hmm. years maybe. And uh, so I asked several people before the meeting what the guidelines said, and, and David went out and got them for us. So it's always good to, to sure. recognize what they say, and I'll just read to you. Fences are generally not present in the district, but they may be added to a lot if they are similar material to other fences and structures in the vicinity. And if they are constructed so as not to disrupt the visual harmony of the front area of the lots. And so I think that's what we're looking at and what Jim addressed was the harmony and the appearance. And, and I think uh, uh, one of the aspects of the neighborliness of a city is, is t and the friendliness of a city is to keep that openness. I, I, uh, I often look around and, and uh, re recall my childhood and running through backyards as I'm talking about young child. I, I wasn't an outlaw when I was older. <laughs> but as a seven-year-old, I probably was, <laughs> and uh, uh, just you know, though we thought they were shortcuts, they were really long cuts. Mm -hmm. But we call them shortcuts, and that's just sort of, uh, and and you know, I know that world doesn't exist anymore, but I wish it did. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I I just would 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 like you to consider our proximity to a campus and our. Uh, position in the historic district. I, I believe we're the last house on the boulevard there that falls in the district. And like I said, we're virtually on campus. And, uh, uh, we have kids, uh, we have had kids in the past run through the yard. They're college kids though. Yeah. And uh, uh, it's purely a security mm -hmm. issue that we're concerned about and I think without having lived there like we have for so long and seen the evolution of the university and the growth and how many students there are now when we bought that house I think there were nine or ten thousand students and now there are twenty five thousand uh, I just we, I understand the precedent mm -hmm. aspect of your ultimate decision but I, I wish you would consider where we are in the district and where we are in relation to the heart of campus. Mm -hmm. uh, would you uh, consider, you know, checking with the, I guess it would be, I don't know if it's the, uh, which department is in charge of construction of that road? Is that is that the state that's constructing it? The Dorman County. Well, but there's a local representative, I would think, uh, whoever's, in the city, the engineering Chris engineering Griffin. office would be involved with that. The managed project, uh, right. the combination of city, state, federal, and college. Right. The money comes from federal, but the federal is not overseeing it. Uh, yes, Chris Griffith. <coughs> Chris Griffith would be the city engineer, and you could go right up to his office and look at the drawing and mm -hmm. see, because it it looks to me like I mean, obviously there's a little drop off. You have some steps at the front, mm -hmm. I have two and steps. so it's the question becomes, you know, where what it, what what elevation is the sidewalk going to sit, and what sort of how do they intend to butt it against your property? Will it have a a retaining wall? Uh, how wide is the uh, the grass buffer, the grass strip, be going uh, to there be? There won't be a retaining wall. I have renderings that are several years old yeah. that probably have been uh, they, they, modified. They had to modify, I know, a couple times along the way. Uh, but uh, but I, absolutely, I would be, I'd be. Check happy. on that yeah. and then, and then <coughs> consider, uh, <coughs> uh, you know, oftentimes uh, movement of people across the landscape is determined by features like landscaping as well as fences. Fences are not the only type of deterrent. I mean, uh, there's there's ways of managing people. You go to a, an airport and people, they manage it by the color of carpet. Mm -hmm. And so you can really, uh, of course, somebody who wants to violate those kind of lines can, as they can with a fence or any, any sort of thing. It just adds to the level of difficulty. But uh, you can manage movement of people with a lot of different
techniques, and that's that's all we're suggesting. I think is well, Mr. Backland, Black, Backland, is your concern more the appearance or the uh, precedent that might be set by? Well, it's a combination of things. I think I, I agree with Jim in that uh, if you have if you do have a fence across the front lot of every house on Main Street, what how does that change your perception of Main Street? And so it's a it's a psychological. Uh, question, I think, and it mm -hmm. does relate both to precedent and to appearance. I think uh, landscaping is softer than a hard structure, uh, and I think landscaping is also uh, one of those things that characterizes, and that's not something that we necessarily mm -hmm. govern. We don't govern landscaping. However, landscaping is something that uh, on the, in the historic district uh, affects people's perception of the district. So if you drive down Main Street, you have these arching trees over the street. Imagine that street without those trees. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a, a house with a, a hedge, and you can, you can manage a pretty significant hedge that would uh, prevent movement of people uh, at a certain height. Um, that just the shape, the texture, the color of a hedge versus the shape, texture, and color of a fence. I think those are things to think about. If the uh, if the hedge masked the view of a shorter fence, would that Soften still it. would that still be uh, oh. something that wouldn't be visible? There's. There may it may not still be there, but there's, there was a white picket fence in front of a yellow multi-apartment Queen Anne house across from Central Middle School on East Main, and it's probably a four-foot white picket fence. We're talking about a five-foot fence. Would it help anybody's heartburn if we say lowered it to four feet to make it <clears throat> still stop people from cutting through? Now, your idea of letting your dog, I don't know what kind of dog you have, but if you got a Great Dane, you can go over no, the foot. No, I don't. <laughs> but would a four-foot fence mediate and make it more palatable to those on the commission who have concerns? Um, I mean, I get your security issue. I really do. Uh, I just, for me, it's the precedent it sets. It starts allowing more fences in the front yard. And I, I mean, if it were me, I would love to see landscaping instead. Mm -hmm. um, but a four-foot fence gives me less heartburn. Five-foot is, I think, just it, it starts to become its own element. And if you were to try to hide a five-foot fence with landscaping, you really could not see somebody hiding. Mm -hmm. Four-foot fence, you know, picket fence, and it's open. Uh, I think you may not have to landscape it much at all, if anything. But I think a four-foot would look better. But if, if I had my druthers, I would rather you didn't have to do it. I know you would rather not have to do it too. Now, it's not going to make the yard work any easier. No, it's not. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I just I, I don't know if um, uh, if you haven't lived on that street when school's in session. I just don't know if you have real appreciation of what it's like. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, some nights and I, some very early mornings too. <laughs> I think um, it's, a, it's a different feel mm -hmm. when you get to that corner. Mm -hmm. um, um, the boulevards over there, all that retail, it's a commercial, it's turned into a commercial corner and there are a couple of houses left on it, but with what the nice wide street now that they're putting there, I mean, you're not supposed to get a, they've, they've taken a, it, the main street feel on the, that edge, you know, it's just gone. So I don't, would we really be setting a precedent for a house down as far on Main or? If it's within the district, you set a precedent set that anybody it. on East Main could come and say, well, the Davis has got one, why can't we? Yeah. And then we would say they're up on the Well, I guess land. we're the only house that joins the university, though. <clears throat> um, I guess my neighbor behind me, Mr. Ferraro, he joins the university. But, Is of course, he, then you got campus school, so there are some that yeah. join university property. I think Deborah. Uh, 
or uh, Mary May, I mean, um, I think, actually, if you go down South uh, Tennessee Boulevard or Middle, Middle Tennessee Boulevard, I think it's the, the median has actually improved it and made it feel oh, less commercial. Oh yeah. And yeah, I think yeah. this area will it's be, <laughs> although it's not, I don't know how wide the median is right in front of you, if it's got enough for landscaping, I guess it does for uh, a little bit, but maybe not as much uh, as South mm -hmm. Middle Tennessee. And I think uh, actually the boulevard uh, development is pretty tasteful. Oh, I do too. They've done an excellent too. job oh, with the landscaping like and having the patio. And yeah. so, so I, th I, I tend to think that this is sort of a, it's obviously a transitional zone. It, it, it moves it between. That's, that's the dilemma. Between areas, uh, the, the university on one side and then the, a couple of little, or uh, a couple of commercial. And then you move on to the apartment buildings, which are the townhouses that are being built south of, of Main Street. But I, I, to answer your earlier question, I, I think uh, a, a lower fence with landscaping would be, that would soften the, the the texture of the mm -hmm. of the development or of the construction, you know, I think landscaping is always preferable to fences. I, and it's funny. I was <coughs> I visited some friends this past weekend who were moving into a new house and they want to have a fence around the backyard. And I suggested chain link, of course, because it is historic, as we've discussed. <laughs> but uh, they didn't like the idea of chain link fence, and I think in our guidelines right. we say we don't like it either. Joe, would you put yeah. the, my picture up again in the house? Uh, if we landscape the front, we'll lose, and you can see my uh, poor begonias. Well, the yard's not had its best year. We, we usually do a little better. Would, would that landscaping block the view of our landscaping adjacent to the front of the house? Well, that depends <coughs> on what you choose. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of options. I think. Uh, two things. First of all, did you say you you are afraid you, you may not even be able to get the 20 foot setback? I may not be able to. Yeah, I may not. I just I I, I, I don't know. I remember Joe mentioning that to me, uh -huh. and when he mentioned it, when I first went in, they hadn't poured the curb yet, and so I didn't know where to measure from. And now they have uh, poured the curb <coughs> gutter, so, but uh, honestly, it slipped away from me. I just didn't think about it. He could meet the 20-foot setback just now as close to the sidewalk as he's wanting That'd on this fun. picture. So he could meet it, but it might be in the middle of his yard. So uh, is the setback from the edge of the roadway? Edge of the roadway, not the sidewalk and not his property line, right. the edge of the roadway. So, of course, this picture doesn't show the, the four lanes curb. in there uh, in the curb. So, and, of course, that sidewalk, I believe, is getting a little bit widened as well. So all that's determining is the, the setback uh, 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 right away. Is that uh, so is the 20 feet? Does the right away extend 20 feet from the edge of the road? N no, the, the fence will be built from the edge of the roadway wherever they're right. expanding it to. Well, so what I'm asking is what is the city's right of way and is it not legal to put a fence in the city's right of way? It, well, it's showing on here. So these green lines on this picture is actually his property. Okay. So the right of way goes up to that green line and that has not expanded even with this project. Okay. So that roadway will not go past this green line here. So technically, if he wanted to, he if that road was going to be right there, he could measure 20 feet back, and okay. that would be the maximum it would have to be. And then, if it, of course, if it's not going to be at that <coughs> green line, if it's still going to be, let's say, right here, then I'll give him a little bit more footage to go closer. But the, re the reality of his yard is not 20 feet deep. It's more. So he can yeah. get 20 feet back. Correct. Yeah. So it's just not that where is he the was. the desired dimension you want to do. What about... Uh, some type of bed between my fence, the proposed fence, and the edge of the road with the landscaping on the outside of the fence, what, uh, what would enclose, what would, would, would I enclose that bed with? Some type of, I have to get some, some dirt brought in and I'd have to get some type of wall, something to <coughs> hold that, hold that, you see what I'm saying? 
Chairman Thompson, if, if the fence is not going to be adjacent to the 20 feet back, you can yeah. put plants on the grass in front of the fence and still then have some grass in the sidewalk and the curb. Mm -hmm. You'd have room to put some kind of shrub or, or flowers or whatever uh, in front of your fence. Yes, you could. Okay. Well, why don't uh, we? Uh, let's. Uh, I've got a couple comments before we go any farther. I, I agree with Mary May. I don't see this as a concern about setting a precedent. And, and the reason I don't is because <clears throat> the Weatherfords have had that fence there as long as I've been in town, and that's 19 years. And uh, we have had very little request for fences along um, East Main or in, in, our, in our district. And the little four-foot wooden fence you were talking about across from the uh, uh, Central Magnet School has been long gone because it rotted away and it's a rental house. It's not being taken care of. So I, I don't have a major concern about setting the precedent. Um, I also don't have, a, I probably would lean uh, for, with a four foot fence across uh, the front of the property. And are you thinking coming off the current fence at five foot and then coming five foot down the side and four foot across the front? What are you thinking? The fence that we approved is um, is basically at the face of their house. Yeah. That was what we did last. So to mm -hmm. me, if you just connect it up to that with a four foot fence along the sides and in the front, it's, it's less obtrusive to me. Yeah, well, I don't have a major problem with that, Jeff. Uh, the other thing, if you look at our, our guidelines, um, this material is similar to other fences and structures in the vicinity. Well, I don't disagree. And, uh, and it's, con it's going to be construction, constructed uh, as to not disrupt the visual harmony of this house because you're going to be able to see through that fence like you see on the, this fence on this side yard. It doesn't uh, infringe on the home. It doesn't <laughs> infringe on the landscaping he has behind it. So it's, you know, we're in an argumentative point here as to whether this is going to be a major <coughs> disharmony, visual disharmony, or it's not. I'm not quite sure that I feel it's going to be a major disharmony. Now, if you look at my property, uh, we're on the corner of South Main, I mean, of, of East Main and South Manny, and we chose to put a U hedge in. Mm -hmm. Of course, when we started off, it was this big. Now it's it's probably about four foot and probably about two, three, about three foot wide uh, because we had a major problem of people cutting through our yard, big time. And, uh, and since we put that up, we have not had any problem. And the interesting thing is the people from what I call, you know, the backside of our house that come walking by all the time, all we hear is comments even though they can't cut across anymore, all we hear is comments about how good it looks and happy with it. Of course, that's incorporating landscaping mm -hmm. with, the, uh, with a metal gate. And uh, I think that's a good example. I mean, I walk, I've been walking past your house, and I wanted to cut through, but that hedge prevents <laughs> that's me. That's a good thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> because I'll scoot but it, it's very attractive. I don't know if you know that's which house it has. I know exactly which house. And that's, that's what I was well. envisioning, is that sort of landscaping, Still. because it really, a yew or a, uh, even a, a managed cedars or another plant that would work Anonymous. would be uh, hemlock hedges, uh, although it's, the, the climate's a bit warm for hemlock, and then you got the bug, the woolly adelgia that'll eat it. But, uh, but the yew is a, it's a, an effective deterrent and because uh, it's kept me out. So. <laughs> Joe, would you put up a picture of my courtyard fence again, please? Yeah, like that, that's very pretty. How would a four foot look tied into that corner right there by the advertising? You will notice it the first week and then you won't even see it. Okay, so that you don't think that's a, and, and that's right up your alley, Chairman Tom. So I mean, you. I would, really don't think you'll notice the difference, and probably one of those horizontal bars at the top is probably about four feet. Uh, probably is, yeah. Would you remove that existing side piece? Is that your idea, or would you like to keep? I'd like to keep that there. Yeah. Uh, just so if I, I really don't want the dogs to have the run of the front yard yeah. very often, 
Uh, I want them to, to uh, certain times I have access, but I don't want them to have the, so I would like a gate there. I would have to agree. With well, Mr. my final comment on is, I mean, I'd like to see some landscaping but that's gonna take time, and uh, if you wanna go with the fencing, I would prefer the four foot. It will solve what you want it to do and mm -hmm. won't be quite as intrusive. Maybe uh, since we've uh, opened the dialogue, maybe I should come back with something at a later date that would show some landscaping, maybe. I mean, I'm not going to do it till the road's finished anyway. I, I kind of was. You're not going to do it till November when it's a good time to plant, too. Or I won't it's do that. Do that mm. November. Well, it would be <laughs> futile to do it now with yeah. the yeah. with the sidewalk not completed. And uh, as I was telling Chairman Thompson earlier, we're planning some other projects around the house unless we decide to bail out and get, get off campus. So. Uh, uh, maybe uh, it's been a very constructive discussion and I certainly appreciate the input. Maybe I should come back with a, a four foot with some landscaping and and we just table that. I'm sorry to bring you all in. Uh, That's why we're here. Yeah. yeah. That's no why problem. we're here. We need no to see each other now and then. But you've given me some guidance now and so would it be appropriate to absolutely to handle can, it that we can, way we can table this discussion and just bring it back when you're ready but i think you've heard a lot of i think good information that may be of help to you uh, i think you see where we're sort of leaning it sounds like it's a four foot fence and landscaping but there are other alternatives uh to it an all landscape buffer that would mm -hmm. prevent people you know something with thorns keeps people from walking through it i can yeah. i can assure you that tell me before we <laughs> break up the thoughts about the the gate across the driveway and which would uh, we we've we've allowed gates across driveways okay. all the time i think linda's question is what was it hooking into was it were you going to try to change the wood fence or work out with this, with the school to to be more like yours or were you just going to butt up to it she wanted to know i think i really like that the, what the design the, the fluted metal design well, the gate would match the fence yeah, yeah it would. that seems that, that would makes be, that, that makes a lot of sense yeah. I, I really like that design no oh, i like the idea of the fence and I, I, I tend to agree with mary may and and with um damon that I don't feel, I mean, even though you're in the historic district, you're in a totally different world. It's really changed. It, it really has. And, and I don't feel like we're setting a precedent with, with a fence. It, it's, uh, it's really changed. And, that was uh, going to be my comment also, that I <clears throat> don't see it as setting a precedent because the, the fence on Mr. Weatherford's house has been there so long and no one's ever come through with that. It's not an inexpensive undertaking to extend the fence through the front yard that way. Mm -hmm. um, there will still be the grass strip because he's gonna be, just by looking at the, uh, the photos, he's gonna be about mm, somewhere around 12 to 14 feet back off that sidewalk if he comes in and complies with the 20 foot setback, Joe. Um, so they will have that, that grass buffer mm -hmm. back beside, behind the sidewalk. Um, Many years ago, I lived on South Tennessee and had a hedge uh, along through there, and and it was a buffer, but it caught everything. It caught <laughs> all Litter. papers. Oh, yeah. and, it, it, uh, and the hedge lived very well. I mean, it. I don't can't remember now if it's still there or not, but uh, since they widened it before, but um, that was my only problem with the hedge was the maintenance which kept you busy. Um, and it seemed to get up because I couldn't keep it down and created more of a visual barrier to the house itself so you couldn't see, you know, the foundation landscaping at all um, at that location. Well, maybe um, okay. we'll, we'll work on uh, some landscape design, too, and something I, I just with the yard sloping down like that, I just wondering that, you know the grass is the only thing keeping it from washing so what I would add to it with your if they keep the sidewalk at relatively like six inches above the road mm -hmm. height 
And if they keep that two foot sort of berm mm -hmm. where your yard's plateaued up to, then with a four foot fence, it's gonna look like a six foot fence. Yeah, oh yeah, it will. That's it, it the will. thing. Well, I'm just trying to get in my mind's eye uh, yeah. what landscaping might, uh, with that slope there, what I might, uh, maybe a ground cover. Well, I think as you were, you know, going over the dimensions there, I mean, if you're, you're going to be far enough back that you've got plenty of room to do landscaping and grass and whatever else. Just, yeah, maybe just leave that strip of grass there and then landscape once we get to the plateau. Close to the fence and leave yeah. some grass in front. Well, I, think, I feel like I think I've, the further uh, you push it back, the less high it's going to appear. Mm -hmm. If it were at the edge, the top of the berm, it's going to appear much, much taller. But when it was a five foot, I think a four foot's a good compromise because it's still going to look like a six foot fence. But the further you push it back, the more it's going to look like a four foot fence. Well, I appreciate you uh, giving me the consensus, uh, or at least the 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 um, possibilities that the four foot is a better option with landscaping, and then I I, I can go forward. I'm, I'm, again, I'm sorry to bring you in without letting you vote on something. <laughs> That's why we're here. And we'll are you, you here, Jeff. Please don't bail. Well, yeah, no, yeah. Well, we we appreciate you, your investment into the community. You're one of the last holdouts, you know, along that strip there. I know. I mean, honestly. So we appreciate your wanting to maintain the integrity of the East Main Historic District. Well, we, we will. And, uh, and we, that's the only house we've ever owned. Uh, so, uh, but it, it's just getting harder and harder to. Why well, make a motion that we defer the request to a future date when Mr. Davis comes back with uh, an additional plan? Do we have a second? Second. Do we have any further discussion? I, do you not? Do you not want to put your fence across your driveway, irregardless? I mean, or uh, you can I, or not not need. I would like right to, now. but again. Uh, that can that can wait too until okay. we do the whole thing. It, it, I, I'm not sure it would be practical to have the if this is approved to have him make two trips once we start the. You may, you're looking a, a ways down the road. It looks like I, next year. If sometime. they would just do the sidewalk, then I can then once that happens. Once the sidewalk happens and it's next. Yeah. Uh, at least on our part of the boulevard, it's the next. And then once that's done, the grass strip between the sidewalk and the street, is that your, you, you will that, maintain that? I will that maintain well? that, right. I'll maintain to the curb. Yeah. And uh, what about, while I'm here, what about mailboxes? I've got to have another one. Is it a, is it a, a, a zoning a commission? Uh, our group, right. we, we've never reviewed it, a mailbox. Is I, your mailbox on the house or on the street? It's on the street now, but it's really on life support. I mean, it's because, uh, <laughs> that, uh, that, remember the historic district oh, of yes. how, mailboxes on the houses were grandfathered once upon a time, but uh, now, it, I don't know, you'll have to check with the post office, I think, huh? Yeah, they don't, yeah, they don't like yeah. walking up to your house. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, they really don't. If, if it's on the street now, they won't move it back to the house. No, Unless no. the, uh, uh, wh where are they south of? Main Street. Where are the mailboxes south of Main Street? Are they on the house or on, on, the, house. on the street? I don't know. On That's a good question. I, I can't think they're on, on the house. house. I, don't, yeah. I don't remember any of them. on the house. So, I mean, I wouldn't want to be the mail carrier on Middle Tennessee. That's a good question. Over there, you know. Uh, I was thinking about building back uh, a mailbox to uh, try to match the brick on my home as much as I can. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts on that before? In well, my just, tenure here on the board, I've never we've never approved a mailbox issue. I mean, just your experience. How do you think that would look? I think the brick. You talk like a, a brick, like with a beehive top and the exactly. boxes exactly. in there. I I think it'd be fine. I mean, or whether it's a square-headed one with some decorative deep, you know, brick corbeling or something. Um, I, I think whatever you come up with. If your house has circular windows, you could say that it sort of you know matches that detail or yeah, the front doors. Is it right well, on the archway? So yeah, you could say it would match your entrance, and I, yeah, that's I don't think we have any heartburn. It's just if a car jumps that curb, yeah, then you pay for it. <laughs> well, they might come. They might also come around and bat it out the window too, which is usually the more frequent thing. And it, uh, the, brick, the brick will help. Yeah, yeah, it, it will. Help. 
I've actually seen some in Bellevue uh, where they put them in like a 10 gallon drywall mud <laughs> bucket and they pour it with concrete. So when they get it, it just falls over yeah. and they put it back up. <laughs> I love for it to be rolling and hit them back when they did it. <laughs> uh, a neighbor at one time, Mr. Buckner had a one that p swiveled. So uh -huh. swivel around and get the bail out. Turn it around. Okay. Uh, well, thank you very much. We yeah, appreciate you coming you. before thank us, and thank you. Mr. Thompson, for, for I don't think we had a full vote yet. Uh, oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, all those then in favor of the motion as described, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? We're done then. Thank you so much. Uh, any additional news uh, or, or business, I should say? Nope, not for me. Okay. If so, the, the chair would welcome a motion to adjourn. So moved. We have a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 We are. Aye, aye. No discussion. We're adjourned. <laughs>